Hello healers, my name is Ben and this is The Moss Report. I'm here today with my father, author and founder of The Moss Report, Dr. Ralph W. Moss. Good morning, Dad. Uh, good morning, Ben. So I understand that today the topic for discussion is flax and flax seed in particular and as it relates to cancer. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about what flax is and then what you've been able to learn about it? Flax is a flowering plant. It's a very uh, pleasant looking little um, purplish uh, colored flower. And uh, it has several distinctive uses. Um, it's cultivated for the fiber uh, from which uh, linen yarn and linen fabric are made. And also the seeds are very nutritious. Those are called flax seeds or linseed. And um, it's the source of linseed oil, which is the oil that uh, is commonly used in oil paints. So it has a lot of uses. In fact, the Latin name uh, for flax is uh, linum usitatissimum, which means the most useful uh, form of, of uh Flax seed. Well, it, it has the usefulness in its Latin title. There are some very strongly held beliefs uh, about its benefits, but can you tell us, is there any scientific study to demonstrate that fact? A very vocal community of people who around the world, mostly in, the, in Europe, I would say, uh, who believe that this is potentially a cure for cancer. And so naturally it's generated a great deal of attention and controversy over the years. There are even clinics that are centered around the, the uh, use of flax, flaxseed oil and ground flax seeds uh, in the treatment of cancer. There are clinics and there are doctors and a lot of lay people who put that much faith in a particular form of flaxseed treatment called the Budwig diet. So the Budwig diet is based around flax seeds? It is. There was a woman named Johanna Budwig, who I think um, was alive just uh, maybe t uh, up until about 20 years ago. And she, uh, in the period immediately well, before and after World War II, she did a lot of research on flax and flaxseed. And she, uh, she was a, a research chemist, and she came to the conclusion that cancer patients should consume uh, three tablespoons of flaxseed oil per day that would be thoroughly mixed with six tablespoons of a European form of cottage cheese, the, the American equivalent of, it's called quark, but the American equivalent would be a low fat 2% cottage cheese. And then she also recommended putting two tablespoons of freshly ground flax seeds on top of that. And that would be eaten every day. And she ascribed some very powerful effects to that uh, to that program. She also had other elements of the diet that she was recommending. She prohibited all animal fats, uh, salad oils. I'm not 100% sure that she was prohibiting olive oil, but, uh, but certainly, you know, vegetable oils. Uh, she prohibited uh, meats, shellfish, processed foods, soy, butter, and most dairy products as well as margarine and sugar. Uh, she also recommended daily uh, sun baths to help energize the fatty acids in the flaxseed oil. And supposedly by following this regimen, one could cure even advanced cases of cancer. So that's the background within which the scientific studies have taken place. Uh, one would, might be tempted to sort of dismiss something, you know, so seemingly unlikely 
as a uh, cottage cheese oil regimen is having any major effects against cancer or being much less being a cure for cancer. But in the last few years, there have been studies that show a positive effect of flax and flaxseed oil in certain situations for cancer. And I've highlighted a few of those studies and I'll share them with you. Okay. But before we get into that, let me ask you, um, so this woman, Budwig, yeah. um, was she a, a doctor? Did she have a degree in medicine or she, I know you said she was a research chemist, but that doesn't tell right. me much. What was no. her background? So she was a, a PhD scientist. Um, her, but people who believe in this uh, program uh, consider her to be like one of the greatest uh, scientists of the 20th century. Uh, uh, she, if, if you believe that this is, you know, a major advance in the treatment of cancer, she obviously by definition was one of the greatest scientists, but she wasn't one of the greatest scientists to her contemporaries. She only, I can only find four or five papers in the big PubMed database of 35 million articles. I can only find four or five of them that she even authored. And that's a pretty, pretty uh, encyclopedic uh, uh, collection of uh, references to scientific articles. And they also make a big deal about the fact that she was nominated for the Nobel Prize, but uh, thousands of people get nominated for the Nobel Prize. Uh, very few win the Nobel Prize. You can't put too much stock in that. Was she actually treating patients? I mean, did she have a clinic where people would go? There were two uh, phases of a very long career. In the first phase, she was working in a laboratory of a more famous scientist, and she did genuine were contributed to the work of understanding uh, fats and fatty acids uh, in relation to health. And it was a bona fide part of a research team in Germany. And in the second half or second part of her career, she became more or less what you'd call a, a lay practitioner. In other words, she, she then became kind of a health guru. And she was advising a lot of people in terms of using the diet that we're talking about. I'm not sure right now, I'm not remembering if she actually had a physical clinic, um, but she definitely crossed over that line from being just a, a scientist to being what I would call a guru. In other words, a person with a a very, very strong opinion about having a, a treatment tantamount to a cure for cancer, which of course, uh, you know, puts her in a different category. But unlike some other people in the alternative field, she wasn't a medical doctor and she never, to my knowledge, ever published a credible case series on what happened to a sequence of patients who took this treatment. So it remained very anecdotal. So most of what you read on the internet is anecdotal. Um, and I don't mean that in a derogatory sense, but people have a right to tell their story of what they believe happened to them after they've taken a treatment. But for the person who hasn't really got, you know, gotten into the topic of how you evaluate treatments, it may seem to be more uh, important than it, than it would seem to a scientist. Well, I have seen a fair amount of zeal on the part of those who are in favor of her program. Yeah. Um, and usually that has some basis in genuine personal experience when you kind of get that type of devotion, but we don't, base any analysis of what we feel has value solely on the backs of other people's zeal. So what can you share with us in terms of where's the science and, and what does it say? Yeah, the science is getting stronger, slowly. 
it isn't um, it isn't yet at the point of being able to say definitively that taking flax or flaxseed oil would have positive health effects for cancer patients, but I think it gets more likely as time goes by. And I, I would definitely consider doing it. I'm thinking about adding flax to my daily regimen because as, you, as I've said many times, of course, I had prostate cancer uh, uh, seven or eight years ago and I don't wanna deal with that again. So I think it's a, uh, there is some data to show that it is beneficial in prostate and in breast cancer. It's not a knockout blow against these things, but it, it looks very promising. And there's really very little reason not to do it, uh, unless you hate the taste of the, the flaxseed oil. Um, at the very least, one can incorporate ground flax. It's strong, seed. isn't it? It is. W one way around that is to get the blonde seeds. They're much less strong in terms of the, the odor, but they're a little harder to come by. Many, if not most, uh, flax products out there on the market, even organic ones, have uh, unacceptable levels of cadmium. It's quite alarming. Another food that has a lot of cadmium in it unexpectedly is chocolate. Mm. Candy bars, chocolate. Is it just the way that the plants themselves tend to store or absorb these minerals from the earth? And Mostly it's in the soil. There's pollution, auto, mm -hmm. auto exhaust and so forth. Mm -hmm. So this is something you have to think about. Academium could be promoting cancer. You don't want to take something against cancer that could be actually promoting the disease. That would be the worst and most ironic, you know, outcome. You were saying that you're considering adding flax into your diet. I, I, I'm sure that the studies that you're going to show us are not specific to flax inclusive of cottage cheese. Correct. Couldn't that have a more potent effect or have the desired effect as a result of that mixture? I, I seem to feel like that's what Goodwood was getting at, that somehow the enzymes or whatever other compounds are in yeah. milk, in dairy through the cottage cheese would activate or, or synergize with the flax. Is that something we can know from the science? I think it's the sulfur that she was after. The sulfur, sulfur in the cottage. The milk. She was looking for a source of sulfur that people could conveniently take. I don't think it was the the milk per se. I think it's the the, the amount, a trace amount of sulfur that's necessary in her opinion and her research uh, to activate the flax seed. I have no reason to. I can't confirm that. I've never, you know, I haven't found studies other than her own. But on the other hand, there wouldn't be much harm, would there, in taking cottage cheese. I found, by the way, the other day, a cottage cheese that has probiotics in it. Okay. I actually, I actually bought some. So that's a very healthy thing in its, its own right. And of course, that's where most of the health claims come about from this formula that she developed and I have no reason to know or to particularly to doubt the accuracy of her observation about the importance of the sulfur compounds in terms of activating the flax. And if you're going to do the program, yes, you should do it uh, with the sulfur. But I'm driven more by the science uh, than I am by the anecdotes. In the scientific studies, I'm unaware of any scientific study that's tried to evaluate her program per se, whereas there are a fair number of studies of, of flax and flaxseed um, which have positive aspects to them. Mm -hmm. So you could, you could do it either way, really. You could just try incorporating more flax into your diet, or you could go the full length and do it her way. 
I mean, I think for me, if I was trying to get some benefit out of something and she was saying that this is the way to do it, people seem to be into it. There's really no major downside that I can see to adding some cottage cheese into your diet unless you're yeah. lactose intolerant in some way. But we have been talking about things of this type where yeah. there's a substance, for example, turmeric, which we made a, a video on, and how the turmeric and the component curcumin in it is made more readily available, bioavailability, uh, through the addition of other things, pepperine and, and others. Yeah. So uh, it makes sense to me that there could have been a synergy with the, um, with the cottage cheese and the flax oil. And we also did a recent podcast on the topic of another oil, olive oil. So it seems a little bit um, likely that there could be other oils that of course. have some anti-cancer properties. But again, I'm just sort of looking around and speculating on the topic. Why don't you go ahead and show us some study and, and give us your opinion on the merit of the study, I think, first and foremost, because it's one thing to talk about the the results. It's another thing to have the context to, to know how much weight sure. I, I will, and I'll jump right. I'll share the screen in a minute. I just wanted to finish a thought, which is that Consumer Lab did say that for whole flax seeds, the Whole Foods product called 365 was very low in cadmium. And for the ground flax seed, Trader Joe's, and that's organic. I think they're both organic. And there are many products out there from otherwise good companies, good seeming companies that uh, have a lot of cadmium in them and you want to avoid that. So this is a paper, flaxseed supplementation uh, reduces prostate cancer proliferation rates in men pre-surgery from a good journal, 2008. And it's uh, coming from First author from the University of Texas MD Anderson Cancer Center, considered the number one cancer center in the U.S., as well as from Duke, University of Michigan, National Cancer Institute, so, you know, all top draw, top level uh, organizations, uh, a multi-site randomized control trial to test the effects of a low-fat and or flaxseed supplemented diet on the biology of the prostate and other biomarkers. It's a complicated, um, uh, mo a complicated design for a study because they're testing two things at once, a low fat diet and a flaxseed supplemented diet. Though just to get it out of the way, the low fat diet had no effect basically in this context. But, okay. what we're, but what we're interested in is the effect on prostate cancer. These were, there were 161 patients who were scheduled three weeks before they were going to get the surgical removal of their prostate. They were assigned to either get a, the, a control group, the usual diet, a flaxseed supplemented diet of about an ounce per day, a low fat diet, as I say, well, you know, that didn't have much effect or flaxseed plus low fat diet. They drew the blood, they checked the PSA and uh, prostate specific antigens and so forth. So the results were men were on the protocol an average of 30 days, which isn't a very long time, right? Because after that, right after that, they had their prostates removed for cancer. Uh, proliferation rates, that's to say the rate at which the cancer was growing, <clears throat> were significantly lower, and very much so, mm. among men assigned to the flaxseed arms, that's to say just flaxseed alone or flaxseed plus, plus uh, low fat. The KI-67 is a marker for malignancy of cells, and that the, the, the score on that was was 1.66 for the flaxseed supplemented diet versus 3.23 in the control group. 
So Which twice guy? is malignant without the flash. Twice, twice, almost exactly twice, right? Wow. Uh, or half, or put it better in more positive terms, h- half the malignancy uh, in the group that got the flax seed just in 30 huh. days. And that's a very, very impressive result, very strong result, I would say. Um, and the flax and the conclusion that is flaxseed is safe and associated with biological alterations or changes that may be protective for prostate cancer. Prostate cancer can the treatment can often be delayed. Uh, there can be watchful waiting or act, otherwise known as act, active surveillance. So there some men are sort of on the fence about whether they even need treatment or not. And if you can cut the malignancy of the cancer in half with something as simple as an ounce a day of flax seed, uh, it could definitely mean that, that many more men could avoid having to go into active treatment. But again, other than maybe from the naturopath, if you're lucky enough to see a naturopath, uh, you're probably not going to hear about this from your oncologist or your urologist. And you could see why people who are into the Budwig diet might feel um, a little paranoid at this point, because here's they've been saying this for decades, she was saying it for decades, and now there's a scientific study showing a profound effect in, in one of the most common cancers, but nothing happens. Right. And, and this is where I think we have overlap with the people who are yeah. sort of, I, I, don't, I hesitate to call them zealots, but they, it does yeah. kind of seem to apply. Uh, the people who are really into the Budwig diet, they do seem to trend towards conspiratorial theories about yeah. the repression of it, which, you know, we've seen in real time the way that natural treatments and remedies can be either undermined or overlooked by the medical community at large. And whether or not you want to ascribe that to intentionality of people actively suppressing it, or if it's just the byproduct of other lobbies and people pushing their things forward, it doesn't really matter. What what matters is that there is good science from reputable hospitals around this topic that show decreased malignancy, period. Yeah. We don't need to even take the debate much further than that. I think as far as whether it's Budwig or whether there's a conspiracy or anything, yeah. this is, is, is definitely a uh, one of these aha moments for- I would say so. So this is a study from- nutrition and cancer from 2014, mostly emanating from the esteemed Roswell Park Cancer Institute in Buffalo, New York. And basically, the results here were positive, but because of the smallness of the study, only 24 patients, it didn't rise to the level of what scientists call statistical significance. The study was too small but in one of the markers of benefit, uh, there was a, there was forty percent lower negative factors than in the group uh, that didn't get the flaxseed. And what type of patients uh, got this protocol? Older women with uh, estrogen receptor positive breast cancer. And being treated for for that condition. Um, they were uh, being treated after their primary treatment with a class of drugs called aromatase inhibitors that's done to prevent recurrences of breast cancer. Okay. So the and results so that's, were, what, that's what they were looking for is whether these 24 women had recurrence? They weren't looking specifically at the recurrence. They were looking at their blood to see whether there were markers of indicating that their condition was getting worse. And finally, I have an example from the journal Frontiers in Nutrition. It's an article from from Portugal, 
on the effects of flaxseed in breast cancer, a literature review, and they're more positive about the benefit of flax uh, and flaxseed, and I'll, I'll quote from their, some of their statements. They conclude that some clinical trials show that flaxseed can have an important role in decreasing breast cancer risk, mainly in postmenopausal women. Observational studies indicate that flaxseed consumption, approximately one ounce per day, can reduce breast cancer risk. Lignans, which are one of the most interesting classes of chemicals in the flax, uh, flax seed, also contribute to the decrease of breast cancer risk. Vegetarians have a higher level of lignin ingestion, meaning that their breast cancer risk is lower than that of omnivores. So they say some studies reveal that the ingestion of omega-3 fatty acids is associated with the reduction of breast cancer. Uh, animal studies show that uh, ALA, a kind of omega-3 fatty acid, can decrease the growth size and cell proliferation and in can increase the death of breast tumor cells. And that would apply because flaxseed is a, is a good source of omega-3 fatty acids. So I was just going to ask it. I, I thought that was more like a fish oil, but it's in flax as well. Correct. It, the, the, the precursor of the compound that's found in the fish is also found in the uh, flaxseed. So walnuts, flaxseeds, fish oil, they're all very healthy. Uh, because of, for many reasons, but uh, basically the presence of omega-3 fatty acids. And that's associated with a reduction in the risk of breast cancer. So there's another mechanism. There's the lignans and there's the omega-3s and, you know, different mechanisms uh, by which flax, flaxseed, flaxseed oil could have a beneficial effect in, for cancer patients. I imagine that part of the effect is the effect on the hormones. And there is a kind of anti-hormonal anti element to the, to the flaxseed uh, and the flaxseed oil. So it's no surprise that the scientists have focused in on the, the, can the two cancers that are the most influenced by hormonal factors, namely uh, breast and prostate. I think it's, the, and those are the most, sort of the most, I think the most common cancers in the world and certainly in the, in the U.S. There's other elements though to the, uh, to the flax seeds that could be much more generally applicable, um, namely the omega-3, the precursors of the omega-3 fatty acids. And I think in that case, it isn't so much about the particular kind of cancer that you have as it is uh, the elements that are common to most cancers. So I would think it would, it would be beneficial for other kinds of cancer as well. We wouldn't really know the answer to that though until the clinical trials get done for these different kinds of cancers. Just like we know, the, I'll make an analogy, we know that the immune system is involved in every, to a certain extent, in every cancer, but immunotherapy works much better for some cancers than others. Even though the immune system is, is functioning, it's there, it plays a role in almost every cancer. So there can be differences. There's a cancer is more than a hundred different conditions. It comes in, you know, more than a hundred different forms. So of course there's gonna be differences. But the question really is what would be the harm I don't know of any harm that would come from taking an ounce per day of flax seeds and maybe a couple of tablespoons of flax seed. I, if there are, I mean, maybe you could get some gastric upset or some people might get some allergic reaction, but you know, there are, none of the studies have identified any serious harm. If you have a good supermarket, they'll have it in a refrigerated case as mine does, but also I go next door to the health food store. So I go for the one that's 
you know, the, has a good expiration date that's refrigerated, that's a pretty well-known brand name. On top of that, two tablespoons of freshly ground flax seeds. And that makes a, you know, a lunch. I only have her research to go on. I have never found a confirmation of that in the, sci in the overall scientific literature. It, we f it would be foolish to go to all the trouble of having taking flaxseed oil uh, and not follow the path that she laid down. Mm -hmm. I, because then all the, all the anecdotal data that you're, you and I are well aware of goes out the window if you're not going to follow the, the protocol. So I'm science driven. I try to be. I, I can't v independently verify that. On the other hand, if you're inspired by this and you've read about this and books, innumerable articles have been written about it, if you're going to go to the length of buying the, the flaxseed oil or buying the flax seeds and grinding them or, or putting them on your food, I would think it would make sense to go the full distance. I can't recall anything presented to the scientific community. I think she turned her back on, gave up on the scientific community, which didn't pay much attention to her at all. And uh, she, her, she was addressing herself to the lay public, which has different standards of proof than the scientific community does. She uh, f felt very strongly that you have to buy the full the full flax, and the flax will turn rancid very quickly. Now, some people say you can buy the ground flax seed and keep it in the refrigerator once it's open, and or the freezer. And yes. are there any other um, quality concerns? The presence of cadmium is a big issue, and I'm... you should, if you're buying something, you should call the company and ask them what the level of cadmium is because it's an issue. Heavy metals, uh, arsenic, um, lead, and especially cadmium uh, affect a number of different foods out there and flax, flax and flax seeds are one of them. Um, I think you just have to do your research okay. and find the ones that are lowest in cadmium. Now, you said also earlier that there was a difference in taste between the darker brown flaxseed and the more blonde colored flaxseed. In my way of thinking, the stronger the taste, the more active the compound. Uh, does that hold true with this? I don't think so. I've looked into this in the past, um, and the, the blonde is, I think, much milder in taste, but I don't think there's any advantage to taking the dark seeds over the blonde ones. The blonde ones, it goes down a lot easier. All right. Well, I know you've done some additional research around products that you feel have a good quality to them, and we'll include links to those in the description um, for the right. video. Well, thanks for all that info. Uh, I hope it's been helpful to our audience who are seeking natural ways to help themselves prevent and to heal from cancer. But for now, for the Moss Report, I'm Ben Moss. How are you healing today? Thank you for watching. We really appreciate all of the support. Please leave a like, a comment, subscribe to the channel, and visit themossreport.com. We wish you all the best for health and healing.